I love the word behold. You know, it actually means, wow. Behold means stand in awe and be amazed. The Bible is filled with great behold moments. Times to stand in awe and be amazed. To be honest, our Hillsong story is a behold story. I can only stand in awe and be amazed. Isaiah 43 verses 15 to 20. It says, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. And thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinguished, they are quenched like a wick. Talking about Pharaoh's armies. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, wow. Stand in awe and be amazed. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. You shall not know it. I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Behold, a new thing. A road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I start each year. Bobby and I start January. For years, we've gone to Noosa in Queensland on the Sunshine Coast and one of my great friends in life as a pastor, a traveling minister who's very prophetic. When I'm on holiday, we have like a three or four hour breakfast and we just talk about life, about what God's put in our heart. He's prophetic. And I find Steve's one of these guys, he says that much. And I take away from it this much. And so I love the way he speaks, not only into my life, but really he speaks for me into the life of our church. He began to speak to me about behold moments. He began to speak to me about a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I got inspired as I began to think about it and ponder it and meditate on the thought. You see, the Bible is filled with stand in awe and be amazed moments. Wow moments. I find wowing has different levels. I mean, sometimes it's like, wow. That's different. That's odd. Other times it's, wow, that's fantastic. And then you have, wow, I am overwhelmed. I am overawed at the goodness and faithfulness of God. I have to be honest, I so often when it comes to God's goodness and faithfulness, it's, wow, I'm overawed. I look at what's happening in our church around the world. So many great things in so many cities and so much uh, on the horizon, so much ahead of us. To me, it's like, behold, stand in awe and be amazed. Well, in these scriptures, in Isaiah 43, here's five declarations, amazing declarations that God made. And I want you to apply it to your life as I speak it into our church. The first is God saying, I've got this. I can do it. It's Isaiah 43, verse 15. He says, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. What's he saying? I'm Lord, I'm Holy, I'm Creator, I'm King. I've got this. What's going on in your world? I've got this. I can do it. You can trust me. I'm God. Second amazing declaration is, I've done it before. He begins to speak about not only Pharaoh's armies, who he drew into the ocean, but he begins to speak about God's people. And he says, verse 16, thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters. I've done it before. <laughs> well, it's true. God has done it before. He literally talks about the old new thing, which was bringing people to freedom out of Egyptian captivity. He begins to speak about the miracle of that. And he begins to remind us by saying that he makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty water rivers that he has done it before. He changed Pharaoh's heart. He gave a road to freedom and a river to fullness in Jesus' name. The third thing is, I'm going to do it again. Listen, friends, I'm going to do it again. <laughs> I will do another new thing. 
I got faith in my spirit for this. I'm excited about it because it says, verse 18, do not remember the old things. Don't remember former things. Behold, I will do a new thing. Stand in awe and be amazed. Now it shall spring forth. He's saying, I'm going to do another new thing. But I love the thought that he says, do not remember the former things. I think when God has so much behind you, so many miracles, so many unusual miracles, so many opportunities to pioneer again, the chance for us literally to be able to say, he has crowned our years with his goodness. But I'll tell you right now, that sentiment erodes significance. If I was to try to explain what I mean by that, significance is in what's ahead of us, not what's behind us. I've got a granddaughter, her name is Willow, beautiful girl. She was at my house and we've got one of those Bougainvillea vines that I love about Australian springs and summers. It's like this full red colour. But Willow was so concerned. She said, Papa, Pops, why, why are the flowers on the ground? She was so concerned for the flowers on the ground. But the truth is those flowers, their significance is over. They had their moment. They had their time to blossom. But that time is gone. The significance is what's ahead on the tree. And it's true in life. If you're the kind of person who looks back, even when it comes to our church, you look at past things. I've even heard people say, right where I'm standing here, there's another smaller building next door. We call it the hub, but it's where our church used to be. I've even heard people say, I remember how amazing it was back then. Well, you know our church then, just at Hills, wasn't even a third, maybe just a third of the size it actually is now. The significance is in what's ahead of you, friend. It's not as what is in behind you. The Lord says, behold, stand in awe and be amazed. I'm going to do a new thing in Jesus' name. So that's not hard for me to take a hold of because I once heard someone say the best <laughs> is yet to come. Praise God. He's going to do another new thing. So he's talking here about 700 years since that old thing. The Egyptian captivity coming to an end, God taking people to freedom. And he begins to show them another new thing. This time he's speaking about Babylonian captivity and releasing people from Babylon so that they could return to Jerusalem, so that they could rebuild the temple, so that they could restore the land. God was saying, I'm going to do a new thing. It's very, very exciting. The next thing he said is, hey, here's a clue. It's a pretty good clue. 19, verse 19, he goes on and says, I'll even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. God is going to give us something new to behold. A road in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. My word for 2016 is behold, stand in awe. And be amazed, God's going to give a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I'll go on and explain what that means. But the fifth declaration is, shall ye not know it? It's God's challenge. Can you see it? Do you believe it? Do you expect it? Can you lay hold of it? Shall you not know it? God speaks into your future, into my future, just like he spoke into Israel and Judah's future. Behold, Stand in awe and be amazed. I will do a new thing. Praise God for that. So if we just took a moment just to reflect, we're not going to live there, but if we just reflect on Egypt, it gives you a picture of what God was able to do because in Exodus 13 and 14, it paints a picture. They had fled. God had changed Pharaoh's mind supernaturally and they had fled towards the Red Sea. And the scripture literally used the words, they were cornered in the wilderness. They had reached a point, they were cornered. And at that point, God brought them back a little. And where he brought them to, ahead of them was Etham. Etham literally is where the mountains meet the sea. It was impossible. There is no way through. Behind them was a place called Migdol. It's in Exodus 14. Migdol was like a military post behind them. It was a sentry point, And from that point, you could look back at Egypt. So they could see their past. They could see where they'd come from, but they could also see Pharaoh's invading armies. And so they knew there was no way back. There was no way through. There was no way back. And the other place mentioned is Baal 
Zephon, literally the God of storm and tempest, was an island out in the Red Sea. They could see that ahead of them. There was no way forward. There was no way back. There was no way through. They were cornered. I think sometimes life feels like that. Another interesting thing is when God told Moses to lift up his rod, the truth is that the other side was 18 miles away from sea level. The horizon's only 14 miles away. In other words, when they stepped out, they couldn't even see where they were going. How often is like that? Got life like that? Serving God is faith like that. When you step out, you have no idea. When Bobby and I came to Australia, I came here as a maybe 20 year old. I was in meetings down in Parramatta, which is a few kilometers from where I'm standing. Do you think I could see what was going to happen just up the road? What God would start in and through my life? I stepped out coming to Australia along with Bobby. We had no clue of what was ahead of us. So what's just a, beyond the horizon for you and I, I wonder right now. New roads and new rivers. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about roads that lead upward to heaven's purpose and rivers that flow downwards with heaven's provision. Roads of faith always lead to rivers a blessing. And so Rhodes, Proverbs 15, verse 24, talks about the way of life winding upwards for the wise. That thought of a road winding upwards and often through a mountain pass when the road is winding upwards, it follows a river. You often get roads following rivers. You wind up the, the mountain pass, but the river, maybe deep down below you, is flowing downwards. When I think about rivers, the Bible says so much about rivers, more than I have a chance to talk to you about right now. But it does talk in the New Testament about rivers of living water. Rivers have life. Ezekiel, he spoke specifically from a vision God gave him about the temple. And he talked about rivers. Ezekiel 47, he talked specifically about rivers that flow out from the temple and would touch the stagnant waters. He spoke about fish and life and fishermen. He began to see that everything the river touched literally came to life. And then he says that that river flowed down to the stagnant waters, the Dead Sea, which is the most depressed place on earth. Jerusalem, well above sea level, but the most depressed spot on earth. In other words, the lowest point on earth is the Dead Sea. It's got such a high mineral content that it, Bobby and I went to Jordan and we actually swam in the Dead Sea. I'm not sure I'd do it again. You gotta make sure that every hole that you have is plugged up. If you don't have your eyes covered, you are gonna get sore eyes. If you don't have your nostrils somehow covered, you are gonna get it in your nostrils. And I'm telling you, it's, it burns, it burns. And then people roll in the mud right next to it because it's apparently got healing capacities. Well, I'm looking for better places than mud for healing capacities this morning. But I'll tell you right now that I love the thought of what flows out of God's house touching dead things and bringing them to life. 2016, let's believe for rivers that flow out of God's house all around the world and whatever they touch, when they touch sin, when they touch sickness, when they touch disease, when they touch poverty, they bring life in Jesus' name. And of course, Micah 4 paints a different picture. Micah 4 literally paints a picture of a river of people flowing into the temple. What an awesome, awesome dichotomy that is. When it comes to the house of God, we believe for people to flow into the temple. We believe to, for life to flow out of the temple. New roads, new rivers. In your life, new roads of opportunity. New roads lead to what? They lead to new possibilities, unusual miracles. They lead to new horizons, pioneer again. They lead to places that have never, ever, ever been impacted before. They lead to new heights. It's amazing in great heights how you can look out and it's like, wow. You, what you see, you can only stand in awe and be amazed. It is amazing. Bobby and I have been Way up above Positano in the Amalfi Coast, there's another town called Nachala. 
I've been up there on a scooter until just a few decades ago. You could only get there by stairs, and it is so high. It is so far up the mountain. There in Italian, excuse me if you are Italian and I get this wrong, but there's a path called something like Signori Degli Dei. It means the path of the gods. I've only done it once. I'll probably only ever do it once because the narrower it got, the steeper it got. And I can't even begin to explain to you how far down it was from there. But wow, stand in awe and be amazed when it came to what you could see. We've got ahead of us some stand in awe and be amazed moments as a church. (laughs) Father, we just thank you for your word. We just thank you for your power. We just thank You that You are Lord, that You are holy, that You are Creator, that You are King. Father, You can do this. You've got this. You've done it before. You've done it in in Egypt. You've done it in Babylon. And today we believe You will do it again. We give You the praise and glory in Jesus' Name.